Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to this kit build. At Crimson we make a, a plethora of guitar building kits and this is one of my favourites. It was an uncut kit, i.e. the body was just a rectangle. The neck itself was uncarved, it was a rectangle, and out of it I have created this beastie. Now, the name uh, Shrek's little brother came about because everybody said, hey, you know, these horns look a little bit like Shrek's ears. And then one of you fantastic individuals suggested that uh, Shrek's little brother wasn't quite good enough and he needed a name of his very own. He is now, of course, Shred. Burn it. <laughs> Yay! In this video, I have made up my mind. I have made up my mind fully, and uh, I am, I think, going to be chopping that out. I, I just, I think it works. The headstock's going to be fine. There is another suggestion, though, from a commenter that I hadn't considered. With all of the facets and calves and curves and bits and pieces going on, including this gorgeous neck, which I really do think I'm going to be in love with, uh, it would be a shame if I didn't for the first time on YouTube, uh, show you how to scallop a fretboard. So, that's where we're gonna start. I'm not doing the whole thing. This guitar is for me. It is gonna be from the 13th fret onwards, really, uh, for the really high Whitley bits, and uh, you will be surprised at how easy this actually is. On we go. And what we're going to do is have full scallops start at the 14th fret. And just because we like curves, we're going to go down sort of something like that. If I really wanted to, I could just go straight through the inlay that they did, but that would be a shame. Before I get onto scalloping this fretboard using my gouges, I need to sharpen my gouge. Working with a blunt tool is both more dangerous and less enjoyable than working with something that is nice and sharp. And a reason that people have told me that they don't like gouges is because sharpening scares them. So here is a very quick tutorial on how to sharpen a gouge, and it is actually very, very easy. You do not need specialist thousand pound sharpening stones or anything like that. You can do it almost entirely, well, you can do it entirely with sandpaper or wet and dry paper and a bit of wood. In fact, well, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's start with a tool from vintagetoolshop.com that has not been sharpened or used in a very long time. Okay, let's start off with, uh, well, fret polishing rubber. There are easier, quicker ways to do this, but uh, this works, and it works well. Th there are also few things I enjoy more than taking a tool that hasn't been used in decades or more and restoring it to full value. It, it often takes five, ten minutes, I said value. That's the tool shop owner in me. Full use. Uh, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, and so shall you. There we go. Clean. Now we can start sharpening. First of all, we take a relatively, relatively solid piece of wood, something with relatively fine grain. Uh, it doesn't have to be too hard. It could be, uh, it could be boxwood or something like that. But uh, if you use pine, the hard grain and the soft grain is so much variation that it will polish and not polish, depending on what is being hit. So what we do is we get a piece of wood, use our gouge that used to be sharp, uh, and knock a couple of custom shapes into that wood, the concave and the convex sections of the gouge. Now that matches absolutely perfectly. I want a slightly longer concavity on this edge, so I'm gonna use a plane to get that and finesse it with the gouge. This is also you know, a very, very, very blunt 
gouge. And once you've got that, you can either lay polishing compound in there. I like Autosol, which is a chrome polish, uh, or you could put a piece of wet and dry paper in there if you need to start from uh, a more blunt or even slightly damaged tool. And then it is literally just a case of working up through the grits. So if I've got a sharp tool, I will make this, cut the shapes in, and then polish up with uh, auto sole or, or even polishing compound, uh, a polishing soap that you would use on a, a, a buffing wheel, something like that, and uh, go up until it is sharp. It really is that simple. And if it doesn't work first time, you're doing something a little wrong, go back and practice. Once you get it, oh my God, it's, it's life changing. Always test it. Cross grain, because that's what we're doing with the fretboard. There we go. I have done this uh, several times in the past using files and rasps, and it works very well. And uh, in this method, what I'm actually going to do is start with a sharp gouge, because I think gouges are amazing, and everybody needs to have one or two. Check out my video that I've made earlier in the year that nobody really watched, uh, talking about gouges. And that's where we stand. I'm going to finish it with rasps and files, and then sand it. Uh, it really is a very, very, very straightforward job. Let's have some fun. When scalloping a fretboard, there are many things to consider. One, should you really do it? Uh, is it going to reduce the strength of the neck? A little bit, yes. Probably not hugely. And, and uh, if you've got a neck that you can feel is already flexible, then don't really, I, I would avoid it. Carving toward the edge of the fretboard is a little bit scary. I'm wanting to avoid tear out, obviously. So I'm going to flip her around and go in from the other angle. And then it is on with the rasp. Fun times will be had. The other one is the playability and how you play. I am fairly ham-fisted, but then again, I also don't spend very much time up at the dusty end of the guitar. So when I'm playing with a, um, a scalloped neck or something set up with, I don't know, eights, for example, small half round rat tail rasp, a file would do, a round rasp would do. I can't stay in tune. I find it very, very difficult to be that delicate because that's not who I am. I'm a guitar builder. Uh, as we discovered last week, uh, never work with guitar builders, children or animals. And uh, yeah, that's a Venn diagram with a single circle. That little rasp I'm using is a little bit too close in and the vice is getting in the way. So I'm gonna swap to something that raises me above the bench and uh, also stops me from bending over, which is nice. Uh, yes, that. I really appreciate your suggestions in the comments below for this build. Uh, and yeah, as I said earlier, the only reason I'm doing this scalloping is because somebody suggested it. Uh, yeah, keep it coming. So once you have come to the conclusion that you really would like to play with a scalloped fretboard, then uh, the question is, how do we go about it? And there are several options. One is files and rasps, and you very carefully remove the material. And basically what you're doing is you're taking the fretboard away so that it, the, the, the fretboard isn't in the equation anymore when you are bending the strings and moving up and down the fretboard, basically. So you don't need to remove huge amounts, just enough that when you push down, you're not gonna to touch the fretboard anymore. 
After the Rasp, I'm moving on to a file. It is less coarse. I'm lucky in that I have VintageToolShop.com and I have far too many tools. Uh, this is a... I can't remember what it's called now. Crikey. It's curved. Riffler. There we go. It's a Riffler file. And uh, for this purpose, it's perfect. After this, I'm going to move on to sanding through the grits. Uh, 180, 240, 320 and I will probably end up finishing at 600 and then with a fine or a super fine crimson fret polishing rubber. Fret polishing rubbers work on fretboards as well. If you've got a manky fretboard, hit it with a rubber. It's uh, so fine that you don't see the scratches, but it cleans it up. It's magical. Onwards. Onwards. Stop talking. Oh, yeah. At this stage, I've spent a pleasant half hour fine sanding and making these scallops look pretty damn homogenous, to be honest. And uh, from a distance, it just looks like a fretboard. It's just boring. I've gone to 240 grit and stopped there. There is more to be done. Now, you will know that I collect watches and love them and enjoy the, the insane craftsmanship that uh, you can see in, you know, medium to high-end watches. And uh, something they play with a lot is texture. There is no reason for these scallops to be smooth and polished and shiny. No reason at all. Let's get out a saw. This is a fret slot cleaning saw for cleaning the fret slots on a bound fretboard. We, we sell them at Crimson. And uh, it's essentially a fine, fine toothed Japanese saw. And it's perfect for this job. It's always a little nerve-wracking doing something like this. Anyway, on we go. See, the thing is, I want to be able to see where I'm cutting. That's better.
All right, I know a good percentage of you are screaming at your screens right now. Last week I asked you why you didn't tell me that that uh, scalloping on the other side of the neck wouldn't work and I sh sort of was disappointed. But, but this week I heard you, yet ignored you nonetheless. I love this. I did do a few tests uh, beforehand. Hold on, here we go. I was on the phone for a good hour. Yeah, the initial test was actually with a scalpel blade, then a, a slightly wider knife over there. Uh, even some watchmaking tools for putting little circles in that I didn't quite like the look of. And finally it hit on me that we're not talking a delicate watch here. We are talking a big guitar and uh, something a little bit more drastic was required. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. It's not to answer your questions before you even type them to me. It is not going to affect playability whatsoever. It is below um, where the pads of my fingers are going to go. And uh, all it does do is make things... Oh, it's invisible in that shot. Come on. Show up. Waha! There we are. Okay. So cameras will always have to be at this angle to the guitarist, but that's fine. Hmm. Fine. Bloody love it. <laughs> All right, to the headstock. To the headstock, maybe later this evening or tomorrow. I sincerely hope that this scalloping has been of interest to you. Uh, the video is a little bit shorter than usual. We're finding that we're struggling a little bit with time to get uh, two full massive videos uh, live each week. Uh, if you know anybody who is a fantastic video editor who likes working for Peanuts, uh, give us a shout. Uh, but no, so with this midweek Wednesday series, we're going to try and compress things a little bit, still have a load of information, but spread the series out a little bit longer and make the videos a little bit shorter so that we can get everything uh, done at this current speed uh, without driving Talitha too much more crazy. Uh, but yeah, look, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, we are obviously working with the new format and we want to keep you happy. Uh, please click like and subscribe. Please consider supporting our Patreon uh, if you aren't already. There are other things going live on there as well. Uh, but most importantly, in the comments below, let me know what you want to see uh, on this build, on other builds. What do you think I should build for the Great Guitar Build-Off? I'm in the Invitational and uh, yeah, what do you think I should do? Uh, and you should be in the Great Guitar Build-Off yourself. You really should. We're done. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.